can you tell me about your expectations once you found out you were pregnant? Oh, well, the expectation was perfect, healthy, hopefully uh, no problems. Uh, we did go through IVF, so it was completely planned, and uh, we almost felt like we got to choose the embryo because there were four ready, and hers looked good, so uh, she was implanted, and seemed like everything was going fine. Um, I did have uh, one little bit of an issue. I think when she was, I was about eight weeks along, um, I had some hemorrhaging or some bleeding, but everything was found to be normal. She was perfectly fine. Uh, we were induced. She was full term at 39 weeks and four days. Um, so we went through the induction and uh, Took a little bit longer than expected considering she was my second child uh, for me to get dilated and everything, but still fairly easy and run of the mill. Um, nothing too crazy. She was born and uh, appeared to really be in excellent shape. Of um, course, everything was great right. um, up until she had uh, her first infant hearing screening. Okay. And when was that? That was the day she was born. I okay. Okay. Um, and so, um, so she went in for an ABR, and it when came. When was that? Uh, two, three weeks. No, it was at, at the hospital. At the hospital. Yeah, okay. it was at the hospital. So it might have been maybe even the next day. And um, it did indicate that she was severely hearing impaired in one ear, mm -hmm. and uh, that she also had some hearing impairment in the other ear. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that was probably the most emotional time for Bob and I um, at the hospital because it just kind of scared the heck out of us. Mm -hmm. uh, we had never really expected to have a child with any kind of disability, and we just didn't know what to think, what to feel. We were really kind of confused and also just, I think, very nervous for her, you know, growing up. What what would it mean? What, so by the time we left the hospital, there were three things that uh, sort of threw up flags for us. You know, the hearing, the um, asymmetry, and trouble with the feeding, and then also the heart. So we went into the pediatrician, and it was like another... Um, indicator popped up. Uh, they look into children's eyes with the red light mm -hmm. and retinas are supposed to shine a red light back. Mm -hmm. Well, with Ryan, there was no red light shining back. So she wanted us to go see a pediatric ophthalmologist immediately, mm -hmm. um, which we pretty much did. I think it might have been the next day. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's when we found out that she had colobomas in both eyes, which are also indicators for charge syndrome mm -hmm. um, and really that was the first person or first specialist who wrote out in his report that he thought that she could actually potentially have charge syndrome. Mm -hmm. So how were you dealing with all this? Uh, it was scary, stressful. Um, I think one of the challenges that we had to really deal with and her thriving and making sure that she was doing what she was supposed to do is making sure that she was eating and being fed. Um, so that was the scariest um, part of it. You know, was she eating enough? Was she? Did it just impact you more each time that you got another diagnosis? I mean, did you feel like it was just like, is it going to end? I mean, you know, what else? And it did. I mean, it did feel like it was just you know piling on. Right. Just piling on it, you know, what, what else could possibly right. um, go wrong? And with each test, you know, we just would hope really for the best. Um, what would you say, what did the doctors tell you about her prognosis as far as with all these di different doctors? Did they give you any kind of, you know, did they have the crystal ball to say what she's going to be like, or did they just say, let's wait and see? and just do the stimulation and things. 
Well, it just certainly seems like a wait and see, and I don't know if that's just, uh, you know, they don't want to get a parent's hopes up to, you know, things are going to be better than they are. Uh, How has Ryan changed you or your family? Well, I think having a baby changes things plenty in and of itself, but having a child that needs extras, um, it's definitely um, something that requires time management. It yeah. requires patience. I think um, having an open mind, a willingness to rely on resources and other people, um, because there's just so much you don't know when you're dealing with um, just special needs, and, and especially with her just not knowing if she's going to have the heart thing, if she's going to be able to see, if she, what she's going to be able to hear exactly. Um, and then now to, you know, just the new things. So learning everything has been quite a challenge. I mean, machines in the home, at one point they did want us to monitor her eating on a pulse, pulse ox machine. Right. Mm -hmm. So just different things that we would never normally have thought of having to deal with, you know, medical suppliers and, um, you know, really learning what a deductible is and yeah. just all this stuff yeah. that, you know, you just with it, when you have a healthy child, you know, just kind of, you don't really think about it. Right. And it's added a ton more work, mm -hmm. um, a ton more work and a lot more stress um, than would have expected. So, and it's been hard. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, uh, I never said I was a pro mom, you know, with my first one, you know. And it's been quite a challenge to kind of just get used to everything. And um, I love me time. And there's not as much me time right. as I'd like right. <laughs> with this one. So you mentioned time management. How many appointments do you or people do you see per week that you normally would not have done? So you were just saying like doctor's Maybe. appointments and because I know it's your your schedule is very tight a lot of times. Given at least that. four appointments each week, yeah. I would say you know between physical therapy and speech therapy and going in for maybe hearing aids. <gasps> Her going in for a checkup for the ear, nose, and throat. Mm -hmm. um, her even going in for a well child visit. We gotta add those in too. Right. She's got shots and things that she needs to do. Right. Um, but uh, you know, follow up appointments with the geneticist and with the um, ophthalmologist. And okay, Bob, I would love for you to just briefly just tell me what your expectations were of having a baby because this is your first baby. Yes. And, you know, how, what was, you know, what were your expectations? And then just tell us a little bit about what happened after she was born and you started getting some diagnosis from the doctor. How, how that may have changed. Okay. So, uh, we were, we were very much looking forward to have with uh, Ryan. And it was a long process for us to uh, get to the position of having Ryan. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Everything was great. We were looking forward to a new member of our, our family. And then when in the hospital, there was a, a few precursors of when she was born. Uh, things started to culminate, you know, in the hospital and then leaving the hospital where it looked like she had a greater issue than just feeding and the ear tag. And that's where we started down the process that ended up with a charge syndrome diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And how did that affect you? Greatly. Uh, I think it, I mean, it, it knocks you off your feet in the right. hospital, just hearing, just hearing the thing that she couldn't hear. Right. We had no idea what else was coming. Right. Uh, so me personally was, I was distraught. Right. Uh, just concerned. More of uh, Ryan's has no control over that and realizing right. what her future could be like. So right. you kind of um, take all that emotion on and you think of the future, you think of everything very right. quickly and it, it was devastating. When the doctors start giving you those diagnoses, and like each one, did you feel differently when each one came? Did you feel more pain, you know? How did you feel? I mean, did you just feel like, what else, you know? Um, so after we left the hospital, uh, we engaged with our pediatrician, and we've, you know, there, there was other things.
things that we had to come about. Right. Our pediatrician, who was pretty active and early on, thought charge could be it. Mm -hmm. So we did a lot of research, mm -hmm. um, and we just continue had to see more mm -hmm. specialists. Mm -hmm. So the realizing how big the, the picture was, uh, for me personally, a lot of the devastation happened in the hospital, and I think recognizing let's move forward, you know, just our, our job is to take care of Ryan, she doesn't know any different. Mm -hmm. um, so each diagnosis is tough to swallow, but the, the, the original onset of just Ryan having health problems is how I originally dealt with right. it. And from that going forward, and even today, no matter what's going forward, is she's our baby, we're gonna take care yeah. of her. So, you know, how do you take a, an unforeseeable uh, outcome and just make it positive? Right. And it's, with that being said, it's always a challenge. Right. Now, did you get on the, com on the computer and start looking through yes, the internet? Yes, immediately. And what happened with that? Just looking through things. And yeah. you, you type it all in, you have, web, you have all this mm -hmm. data out there. Um, so it actually, the research and looking into things, I think, prepares you for what the doctors are going to say. Okay, so that made you feel more prepared versus uh, then scaring you more? You know? I think the I think it realized that there could have been a lot of different outcomes right. from the different diagnoses. Right. And me personally, I kind of prepare, prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Right. So, um, you know, I don't know. It's a very fluid Right. environment still right, right. We, we have a, another test tomorrow Wednesday right. with the GI right. we, we don't know so you're, once again I guess you for me personally I prepare for the worst and hope for the best mm -hmm. and that's just kind of the way I go about it so then how do you see Ryan now today now that you've sort of worked through some of it I mean obviously the future is still very dicey you don't know where it goes but do you feel like she's making progress you feel like she's yeah. I think the, I, so I have a uh, nephew with Down syndrome and talking to my aunt then, everything you hear is always doom and gloom or the worst case or you hear it from the doctor's perspective which is extremely one way and you feel that it's gonna, it's extremely impact, you know, it's, it's hard. Mm -hmm. So the, you know, talking to her and just saying you, you hear the worst, you know, up front and she, it always gets better. And that, that's been pretty true with her. I mean, we heard she had hearing, sight, all these things, and you had no idea the, the, the level of it. And here, you know, we feel she's doing fantastic. So she's making great strides every day. You can notice the strides. Um, I personally don't really view her as having charge. I just view her as Ryan, and good. we're going to enable her to do whatever she can. Right, right. Very good. And if you were to... I guess I sort of, you talked about how it changed you. How did it change you, though, as a person? Has it changed you much as a person? Or? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I, I think so. Yeah, I mean, it's, it slowed me down, right? I think, I think I've always, I, I, somewhat, <laughs> my wife may disagree, <laughs> but I think it slowed, me, it slowed me down to a point where uh, you're usually always running off to the next thing, the next thing, and going to the next thing is really not that important. Yeah. So I think it's uh, given me a greater perspective. Right, right. If you were to give one piece of advice to someone who's going out there for the first time trying to help a family in your situation, what would you want her to possess or to be like or to do or whatever? What, what's the best thing that someone new coming into your home can help you with? Well, I would think yourself and you know, Sherry have done a great job. And I think one of those things that it is, I think there's, there's empathy. Uh, there's understanding and there's explanation, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't need to know everything. It's more of empathizing with the situation we're in, which uh, with experience, so yourself and Sherry are very good. Mm -hmm. So I think you've had a lot of experience with developing those talents, which are not easy to develop. So I think the idea is be empathetic to, you know, which you have to have that characteristic in that job. Mm -hmm. um, so empathetic to the, the environment. It's not a mat. And then trying to understand the family situation and then help guide that family as best you can, you know, to the desired outcomes. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I don't know if that answered your question. But. Yeah, did. I mean, can you tell us, you know, how it's been since Ryan came home? It's interesting. She likes colors. A lot. Sit by she basically stares at him. <laughs> I think she just... I think she just thinks... They're interesting. 
Mm-hmm. And I don't think she has a favorite, other than, like, all of them. What do you see Brian doing in the future? Let me see. Maybe she might be an artist, since she likes colors so much.